for those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Elena and I'm an expat living and working in Odessa, Ukraine. I've moved to this apartment maybe for the last two months and I waited for so long to do a tour because I really want to get a feel for the apartment to tell you all the good and the bad um, things about it. The apartment has three separate rooms. Uh, the toilet and the bathroom, which are not counted in the three rooms, are separate here. Overall, it's uh, 92 square meters and the height of the ceilings is around 290 cent centimeters, so almost three meters tall. Uh, very spacious, a lot of light. Together with the apartment came all the furniture, which is very typical for Ukrainian apartments. And here we have a shoe cabinet and a bench, which makes it really comfortable to, you know, dress up or put your shoes on when you are, uh, when you are, uh, you know, going outside. I don't have a place to put my boots, my tall boots, so they just lean over here. Uh, but otherwise, really comfortable. There is light, there is a big mirror, you know, I can look at myself. And there are hangers for everything else. So if you're wondering, hey, Elena, where are you putting all the rest of your clothes? Because this is definitely not enough for everything, like for luggages. The secret lies in this pretty spacious wardrobe, built-in wardrobe. So here we keep all kind of... Know, stuff that we don't use as much. <laughs> it looks really ugly, but you know, it's very practical. So all the technical details are here. And then the cleaning stuff is down there and like stuff that we don't need is up there. And there's also a camera. Obviously it was put by us, uh, partly for security reasons and partly just because we want to see who comes into our apartment. This is the second section and this is where all of our luggages sit and all the boxes because next time when we move you know we don't want to be purchasing new boxes um actually at the beginning we were pretty scared that not everything is going to um fit in here but after putting boxes into boxes it kind of all worked out and i love the fact that there is this big tall mirror here because when you're coming through the corridor it kind of reflects the space and make it look even bigger but even like look at me it's like it's pretty big and now we are going into the room where I spend most of my time uh, because it's a living room combined with my office. So when we first came here, obviously it was just thought of as a living room. The sofa was there and this is a transformer sofa, very typical for, for Ukraine because, you know, not only could you use it as a sofa, but also as a bed. So we just tried to use it for a couple of nights when it was a sofa and realized it was not very comfortable. So now we just like use it like this for watching TV. As mentioned, the TV was way, you know, far away there. It was not very good to watch it, especially with the door in between. So we divided the area into the lounge area where, you know, we chill, we eat some. <laughs> candies, you know, light some candles, really nice and relaxing area. Uh, we have the plus station here. So all the furniture, as I mentioned, the coffee table, the sofa, uh, and this, um, this cabinet was here. The TV is ours, although they had their own TV. So another tip for you guys, if you're coming in and you see some pieces of furniture or some, um, you know, TVs or anything that you would want to be taking out of the apartment uh, before signing the lease is the time to negotiate those things and make sure that the landlord will be able to take the pieces of furniture that you don't want. This room has a lot of natural light and that's why I love it so much. And probably this is the reason why the majority of our plants are, are here. On that window seal over there, we put all of our seedlings and avocado plants. And this is because this radiator um, below the window seal uh, is not functioning. Uh, although it's not a problem for us because it's pretty hot in the whole apartment and this room specifically, this radiator is working and it's warming up the whole room, like never had a problem with it. Especially during warm days, it's, it's pretty hot here. Sometimes you have to open the window. And the surprise of this apartment is the small balcony and the door that leads to the balcony and then to our bedroom. So this is like a small L-shaped balcony. I can't wait for spring to come and for us to chill there and maybe drink some coffee in the morning or put some plants. I'm pretty excited. Uh, these two plants also came with a property and we uh, 
pledged to take care of them. So we'll see how that goes. But this is all of our plants and this is my working area. So the table is mine, the chair is mine. Every room in the apartment is equipped with an AC. And although it's pretty hot in Odessa, I thought that, you know, it's an exaggeration, but you would not believe how hot this apartment gets even in winter when there's lots of sunshine. So either the windows are not very good at isolating, you know, the, the heat from outside or it's the building, but it gets super hot. I think during the summer, it will be hot as hell here if you don't condition the air inside of the apartment. So I'm really happy and thankful for the ACs and probably will put even an AC in, in the kitchen. So this is the living room. This is my favorite green space. And um, now let's go to my second favorite room, which is the bedroom. The corridor is so wide. I love it. I love it. And there's lots of natural light. And here is the room where we sleep. It's the smallest room in the apartment. It's also the darkest room in the apartment. Uh, but I don't mind because the bedroom is just for sleeping. And I think it's good that the room is kind of cold and uh, chilly uh, because we get better sleep and, and dark. So just a standard bed here. Uh, each of us has their own bedside table, uh, which we use for charging our devices. And here, this is a little drawer that I use for different documents and you know stuff that I have, like more important stuff. Um, each of us also has their bra, and this is nice uh, when you want to read something in the evening. Uh, now, opposite of us are the wardrobes. And I would say all the clothes that we wear on a regular basis fit in here, plus a chest of drawers for uh, all the linens and towels. Let me show you actually. So this is my drawer. Um, it's pretty much enough for me. These are all my clothes. Then um, the intimates, uh, the, the socks, uh, the clothes that I wear at home. And here there's a drawer with um, shoes and some other stuff. So overall, I think everything fits nicely. All the summer clothes are in the luggages and um, in the wardrobe. And when you know the time comes, you kind of switch the clothes, put this in the luggages and put those here. Uh, the chest of drawers with the linens, some towels. Uh, now, one point of argument was the TV, whether it should be in the bedroom or not. Um, I'm an adept of not keeping the TV inside of the bedroom because this is the place for kind of chilling and sleeping. Uh, but it also came with the apartment and we decided to keep it for a while. And this is Eugene's wardrobe. And as I mentioned, um, there's this small balcony. I'll just go outside really quick to show you because it's cold. Yeah, it's cold and windy. Another thing specific to this apartment is how windy it gets. And I think this is because there are not a lot of buildings, which is good because you don't like look at other buildings, but it's bad because it's so windy. Let's go inside. Ooh. Oh. Now let's go to Eugene's room, his secret lair in which I don't have access. <laughs> I go there like for 10 minutes during a day just to check in with him. Um, this was initially designed as a children's bedroom. Uh, probably you can tell from the colors, from the fact that there's a small bed here, you know, from the furniture. It has so much light that we actually had to draw the curtains because it's impossible to work like this. There is another AC here. There's this um, cabinet that is used for, you know, all kind of technological junk. Eugene's workstation, this all came with us with the chair. But the furniture that was here is this um, wardrobe. We actually use for, you know, all kind of stuff that Eugene has. And Eugene has more stuff than I do. So I don't know what it says about him or about me. The majority of the furniture that is here is kind of old and you can see that, you know, it has seen better times than this. Because we have 
guests, one of the points that we negotiated with the owners was uh, that they replaced this bed with um, a transformer sofa, just like you saw in the living room. But when we don't have guests, we can transform the bed into a sofa again and it would not occupy a lot of space. And finally, we are going into the kitchen, which is super sunny. That was one of the things that really uh, made me uh, decide on this apartment. In the previous one, we didn't have a lot of light, but here there's so much light. It's a pleasure, especially in the morning, uh, to drink coffee, to eat breakfast here, because it's really, really nice. Let me present to you the kitchen. It came uh, fully equipped with a fridge, a freezer, uh, the stove, the microwave the owners bought because we requested this. So again, if you want something to be purchased, just negotiate it before signing the renting agreement. All the other um, machines like the tea kettle, uh, the soda stream, the coffee machine, the grinder came with us. So this one we use for clean plates. And this is the rack for all the washed dishes. It's actually pretty comfortable to wash the dishes here and then put them up. Um, the sink is not very deep, which makes it not very comfortable to wash here. And there's this um, economy faucet, I would say, like this is not a classical faucet. So the thing is, it kind of, you know, disperses water. It, it's, it's not a constant stream of water, it's like the dispersed stream of water. Um, so when you wash dishes, it's kind of <laughs> bouncing back from the sink onto you, not very comfortable. But hey, it's a rented apartment, you have to make do with some things here. The plan was to put the trash bin inside, uh, but it doesn't really fit because you have other things here. So for the time being, we are keeping it here and it, it is pretty comfortable. Another thing about Odessa that you absolutely should know is that the uh, water from the tap is not drinkable, so you have to purchase your own water, which, which we did for a long time in our previous apartment, but here we decided to um, uh, get the service that delivers water to you in this 10 liters, no, 19. Eight, 19, 19 liter bottles, and we bought a special faucet for it, so I'm just going to demonstrate. Very comfortable, you just go here. And you drink your water. Uh, the only thing that we don't use this water for is like when cooking pasta or when cooking rice, we just use regular water. There is a hood here, so you can connect the light. Choose the section, but in my opinion, it doesn't really do much, maybe because of the position or maybe because it's small. And these are my two favorite cabinets. This is the tea cabinet and the cabinet for cups and glasses. And this is the coffee cabinet and the cabinet for all sorts of sweets that we have. And finally, this is where we keep the pots, the paper. Another thing that I love about this kitchen is that we have a full-fledged uh, table for four people here. So we eat our breakfast near this beautiful panoramic window. It's really a pleasure. Um, if we are going to invite more than four people, <laughs> it will become a problem for us, but I don't think during the pandemic this is going to happen anytime soon. And the final addition to this kitchen was the dryer machine. Our initial plan was to put it in the bathroom, but it was just not fitting in there. And actually I'm gonna show you the space. So we put it here. And when there's a specific smell from the washing detergents here, we can just open the window. There's only one window that would open and it's this one. I told you it's super sunny. So let's see the bathroom and the toilet. Ta -da! Ta -da! So first things first, this is the washing machine. It came with the apartment. This is very standard in Ukraine. Our initial plan was to put the dryer on top of it or maybe near it, but unfortunately the space doesn't rent. One of the things that I don't like about this apartment, well, I'm grateful that they have it, but I don't think it's a really good design, is the boiler, you know, it's big, it's clunky, there are pipes coming out of there. All our stuff is here. Oh, there are small spaces for storage, storage spaces. This is Eugene's, cause he's taller. Uh, this is like stuff that we share. 
There's the cabinet that we use for medicine and for some other stuff that is mine. You know how they say that you have to really uh, choose an apartment that suits you? I love soaking in the bath. So one of the things that I knew the apartment has to have is, is a bathtub. But unfortunately, this bathtub is not very comfortable because when I like lay here, uh, I'm very close to all this metal stuff. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say that I soak for a long time here. It's, it's very short. I have to actually be a giant to be able to bathe under the shower. So like this whole bathroom situation, I don't like. Having your toilet separate from your bathroom is the golden standard in Eastern Europe. The bacteria from the toilet can actually migrate to other surfaces. You know, there's your toothbrush there, kind of other things that you use on your body, so it's not very hygienic. How much truth is to that, I don't know. But here is the toilet. The toilet room is really tiny, only the toilet and the sink, and here under the sink we have a cabinet that we use for, you know, storage. I hope you enjoyed the tour and, you know, um, in the next part of the video, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about So why don't we have a quick chit chat about how we got the apartment in the first place and all the procedural things that you need to know uh, before moving to an apartment in Ukraine. So obviously the first step is finding the apartment and in order to aid you with the process, there's a specialist called here, uh, a real estate agent or realtor. Uh, you would probably think, why would I need to spend extra money on finding the apartment? You know, I'll just find it with my own resources. But the truth is the majority of apartments that are on the market are apartments with a realtor. So a realtor that was hired by the owner of the apartment. And if you're going to decide on a specific apartment, you still have to pay the commission to the realtor although they didn't help you in any way. So in this case, I'm like, if you're going to pay the realtor anyways, let him or her do the job for you. Let them search for apartments, let them, you know, fill all the criteria in terms of square footage or in terms of furniture or in terms of price that you have. Before signing the contract, that's actually the time when you have to negotiate and you can negotiate even in Ukraine. I would say that in Ukraine, we don't negotiate a lot. So the, the leeway that you'll have is pretty small compared to other countries. Also, you have to be very delicate with the bargaining, not, not very tough because Ukrainians don't really like that. But it's absolutely possible to negotiate. it. So let's start with the money. We are paying 550 US dollars. I think it would be very realistic of us to bargain it down to $500. Obviously no guarantee that the owners would accept that, but I think it's not like 10% is not such a big amount. In terms of furniture, we definitely bargained some things of furniture to be taken out and some pieces of furniture and electronics to be bought. More specifically, there was no microwave, so we asked the owners to buy that. The biggest purchase is the uh, sofa that we ordered for uh, two people to sleep, a transformer sofa in Eugene's room where he does his work. This is for our guests. It would be difficult to bargain in terms of price and in terms of amenities and electronics and furniture, so I think you have to pick the one that is more important for you. However, if you pick furniture and electronics, just keep in mind that it's up to the owner to buy um, furniture, electronics that is as cheap or as expensive as they want. From the moment when you decide that you actually found the apartment of your dreams, uh, the process goes very quickly. So uh, we decided upon the apartment and I would say in maybe five or six days, we already met to sign the contract. The realtor and the owners will really hurry you up because um, just you know, giving your honest word that you will rent the apartment obviously is not enough. They want to sign the contract with you. And when you're signing the contract, you actually have to pay an amount of money to, to secure the place. That is number one, the first month of rent, which in our case was 550 US dollars. Uh, one month of deposit, again, $550, and the commission for the realtor, which in our case was 50%, 50% of $550 is $275. So that's over $1,400 that we had to pay at the beginning of the rent. 
the contract is usually the document that you have to read very carefully, like any contract, right? Uh, but it often stipulates very important things that um, you should know beforehand and you should pay attention to. Every item that you use breaks at some time. Is it your responsibility? Do you have to pay the money to service the fridge or service the stove or whatever? Or is it the owner? This is a really important question. Um, and it will probably kind of appear during your stay in the apartment and definitely when the security deposit is to be given to you uh, because that is the moment where the owners are uh, paying attention at all the details like oh this tile is a little bit loose oh the faucet you know is a little bit runny oh the toilet doesn't flush right so I would really suggest discussing all of this up front and writing it in the contract uh, the second thing that you need to write in the contract are any damages that the apartment had when you received it. And optionally, all the electronics that they were in the house. For example, there are two TVs, there's the freezer, there's the fridge, um, there's a stove and so on and so forth. The last thing that I believe it's really important to discuss beforehand and to include in the contract are the amenities. Um, it's already the second time when um, we kind of briefly discuss the amenities where we're going to pay. The standard set is obviously cold water, hot water, electricity, and heating during the winter. But unexpectedly, additional amenities were <laughs> added to the list. SDPT, it's an acronym that stands for maintenance of the house and of the adjoining territory. So everything that you have in your house's courtyard, whether there is a place for children to play or a basketball court or you know what have you, uh, this is all kind of coming into um, into this umbrella term. Also, uh, there was service of the lift, there was uh, paying for security, and there were some like additional charges related to uh, managing the gas system of uh, the building. It's a good practice to kind of foresee the situation and say that if there are any uh, new payments, uh, additional payments coming that would be for the maintenance of the house, you would either not pay it or pay it 50-50 or pay it fully. But Agree that before you actually sign the contract and stipulate it in the contract itself. Finally, the most exciting moment is moving into the apartment. We use the services of a moving company because our staff was in another apartment in Odessa. This is our second apartment. Uh, the whole process took longer than expected because last minute we were still packing stuff as the movers were moving things out of our apartment. We got everything in, we t uh, I took the ride in the truck with the, with the movers and Eugene got himself a taxi, we met here with the owner and the guys moved everything into the apartment. Now it looks even more messy than uh, it was in our place. Uh, but the whole move, it was it lasted three hours approximately and it costed us 1,000... 1,700. 1,700 uh, grivnias, including including some tips. There were uh, two movers with a with a bigger car that could fit everything in. Um, I do think that the whole unpacking process <laughs> will take as much as we did the packing because there are so many boxes. I cannot like we. I feel bad that we didn't make a note on all the boxes to kind of know what goes where. So now I'll have to open all the boxes and kind of figure things out. Uh, also very tired and very hungry since the morning. I only had a cappuccino and Eugene had a coffee and some grechka. <laughs> yeah, so happy to move, but it, it was a it was an ordeal. Um, Final step is settling into your apartment. Now, obviously when you see the apartment, you can notice some things that are a little bit uncomfortable or are not working properly, or maybe something is leaking. But once you start living and using all that furniture and electronics, you know, at uh, full capacity, that's when a lot of things are prone to happen. And I think the first month, especially is the time to complain if there is something broken obviously in a nice way but let the owners know that this is not working or that is not working even if you agree that you know fixing things around the house would be your responsibility long term i think most owners would be okay with fixing the things in the first month because it's obviously not broken because of you it's broken because you know it was poor quality it was just got old with time Unless you start your lease at the beginning of the month, it makes sense to take a photo of all the meters for hot water, cold water, electricity, and then uh, subtract everything that you haven't spent. 
And this is usually done in the first month when the um, bill for amenities comes in. Uh, our owners were really nice, they made all the calculations, they prorated the things that were not on the meter, and uh, we took specific calculations of the water, the cold, the hot water, and the electricity we used from the moment we entered the apartment. Again, um, a very common practice, so be sure when you enter your new apartment and when the owner gives you the key, so that will be the moment from, you know, in which you'll be, from which you'll be staying in the apartment, to, you know, if the owner doesn't tell you, to take photos of all those meters. Really useful. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. I have a very small channel, so every subscription counts. If you liked one of the rooms in the apartment, I would be very curious to know which one of the rooms is it. So please comment down below on the room that you liked most and why is that. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.